The case of Ecuador in some ways is a repeat of the old, an IMF loan with its austerity policies, which gives rise to the anger of the people of that country, with mixed results at the end. Going for the loan is relatively easy. The IMF ready to embrace that country, with strings attached, of course. But at what cost? It was a hard-fought battle, but the people of Ecuador won. Fuel subsidies, they were scrapped. Next, a look at the IMF austerity package. It remains in place. What will Moreno do to satisfy it? Next, IMF loans, often controversial. Does Ecuador risk lose its sovereignty? And finally, the U.S. influence on Ecuador. Why is Moreno going out of his way to please Western politicians like the U.S. President Donald Trump? When it comes to South America, we think of Brazil, Argentina, and Peru. But there's another country which has grabbed the attention of people with its rich culture and natural beauty. Ecuador, home to the UNESCO-preserved Galapagos Islands and historic Quito, ancient pyramids, Pinocchio lizards, and other rare species, and of course, bananas. But it was far from the thoughts that one day the country would be filled with the smell of bullets gunpowder smoke from tear gas, fairy barricades, and the injured who were caked in blood. The public found the austerity measures against farmers and those less well off. Indeed, when the subsidy cuts went into effect, gasoline prices skyrocketed and diesel prices doubled. Our guests joining us for today's program are Danny Shaw, professor of Latin American and Caribbean studies from the City University of New York. We also have Aline Piva. She's a journalist and commentator who joins us from Sao Paulo a little later on in the program. And here in the studio, uh, we have our special guest, Ramin Vahidzadeh. He's a senior lecturer at the University of Tehran, an expert on Ibero-American affairs, and also Roberto de la Madrid, award-winning journalist. I'd like to welcome you Thank all you. to this yeah. program. Obviously, for us, it's a pleasure to have you and your expertise on this. It's our pleasure. Well, first, uh, a reminder of what the protests were all about. They were against IMF austerity measures. Taking a look at uh, what these protests and how they evolved, well, one of the requirements for the loan it was to end a four-decade fuel subsidy. Due to the scale of the protests, however, the president, Lenin Moreno, reversed his decision. So uh, those were some of the reasons there. Now, Danny Shaw, for more than 10 days at the beginning of October, Ecuadorians across the nation revolted against President Lenin Moreno's austerity decree by the name of 883, in which he announced to satisfy part of the U.S.-based International Monetary Fund's loan conditions. Were you surprised at the protest? Lenin Moreno was thought to be the continuation of Rafael Correa in the Citizens' Revolution, La Revolución Ciudadana. But he proved to be the great betrayer, a sellout, and a useful lackey for the IMF, the World Bank, international finance, and the elites of Ecuador. Okay, Roberto, you just heard our guest there, Danny Shaw, talk about the IMF and how the people are revolting against that. Um, do you agree with what he said, first of all? And uh, what, do we, uh, what, what are your initial reactions when these protests broke out in Ecuador? Well, I, I think, uh, of course, he's a traitor, uh, Lenin Moreno. But uh, I think before talking about this, we have to understand a uh, very special phenomenon all over the world. Uh, I think this is this cancer that is eating the societies in the world is corruption. Corruption and being, a lack of being brave. 
Why I'm saying this? Because I was talking with uh, Ricardo Patiño. Ricardo Patiño is the former uh, um, uh, relation affairs, uh, no, foreign affairs of uh, uh, Ecuador. And he told me something, uh, something amazing. He told me that the problem is not that the IMF was ordering uh, Lenin Moreno or uh, Lenin Moreno is working with them. The problem is that Lenin Moreno because my question was, you are not responsible, you and Correa are not responsible of having Lenin Moreno as president because he was part of your team. And uh, he told me, yes, we are responsible that we didn't understand what kind of people is, is Lenin Moreno. And uh, Lenin Moreno was accumulating a lot of money in a kind of uh, laundry bank. And the CIA and the IMF, or the intelligence of the United States, he told me, were, uh, were uh, uh, trying to follow this road of money till they detect where is the money, and then they are making a uh, kind of blackmail to Lenin Moreno. Lenin Moreno now, he, ha he has to obey. Uh -huh. the, the, poli the police. Okay, so this puts it this twist. Is, this, is the, this is the problem. When, uh, when we, we don't have corruption and we have a brave people, of course it, it doesn't happen, but uh, Lenin Moreno is a kind of coward mm -hmm. because of the corruption that we have in our countries, then he has to obey the policies of the U.S. So, uh, Ramin, looking at what uh, our guest uh, here, Roberto, is saying, do you think that IMF was just another factor in the uh, grievances that people had. And of course, corruption um, is one of the things that perhaps people are aware of, which was another reason for them to come out and protest or to have protested. Well, the IMF uh, policies are not welcome in Latin America. There is a grudge, somehow a, a grudge against IMF because of what happened in Chile or in Bolivia or recently uh, in Argentina. The Latin American people are uh, somehow against and has uh, some kind of allergy against the uh, IMF. And when you talk about it, they uh, go crazy about uh, not letting you to go forward uh, with the IMF loan. Uh, and also, the thing that happened uh, uh, there, I think that Mr. Moreno did it uh, with... Uh, some kind of hurrying. Uh, he didn't have to go that fast in this direction because first of all, if we uh, take a look on uh, the economic uh, basis, we see that he had enough money if he wanted to collect the tax at the first time. And also he could somehow put forward some kinds of new reforms. And then if at last he sees it's n not another option there, he could uh, get that loan from the IMF. But uh, the things uh, around that matter uh, makes it curious because we see that uh, Moreno uh, suddenly goes forward to having relation with the United States. Uh, he gives up uh, Julian Assange, and after that, uh, it goes against uh, Venezuela and says Maduro is uh, not legitimate there, and uh, put the pressure on outstanding Maduro from the power. So by seeing those things and also the rumors that he has many properties in Belize, uh, he wants to protect them, and with this money he can do that. Uh, we can have this suspicion okay. that he is somehow, as Roberto says, a corrupt person that wants to seek this agenda of corruption mm -hmm. and put them in misery, uh, the Equatorian people. Yeah, and they become obviously uh, collateral damage in this case. Exactly. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look first at some of the um, additional information that we have on what happened in Ecuador, and we'll come back and discuss this further. The government led by President Lenin Moreno. Well, Ecuador was in the need of a bailout. That was his logic. He opted to go for the IMF. 
and other development banks and received $10.2 billion, including a $4.2 billion loan from the IMF. But Moreno was about to learn the hard way that Ecuadorians were not just going to passively sit by and let him exercise IMF austerity. The cuts were part of an austerity program to secure a $4.2 billion loan from the International Monetary Fund. Moreno promised gas subsidies a cut of some $1.4 billion to the IMF last year. It increased transportation costs by 45% and prices of everyday goods. La verdad es que existe un gran descontento generalizado por la traición de este tipo, no a mí, a todo un programa de gobierno, a la propia democracia, por el acuerdo con el Fondo Monetario y la implementación de medidas tan duras como la duplicación, por ejemplo, del precio del diésel mientras se reducen impuestos para los ricos, eliminan aranceles para artículos suntuarios, etc. La gente no aguantó más. Esa es la realidad. In general, when that happens, politicians either backtrack on the reforms or are replaced by more populist leaders. But neoliberals, who are interconnected, may take over one another. The transfer of wealth from the poor to the rich, as well as the plundering of natural resources, continue, making the most antisocial version of global capitalism. Many believe that Washington headquartered International Monetary Fund is the agent in charge of legalizing this transfer. Nos vamos hasta conseguir el objetivo, hasta conseguir el objetivo, y ese objetivo es, pues, de la derogatoria inmediata del decreto 883. Pero este momento, nos están reprimiendo este momento, pues, este momento, nos están asesinando este momento con estas armas. Aquí está, un calibre, calibre 12, calibre 12, cuando hablamos esto, Alcanza los 30, 60 metros. Esto no es, esto no es, no es como dicen bala de goma. Esto es una bala verdadera que asesina al pueblo. Hoy está matando a la gente, está matando al pueblo. El Lenín Moreno está matando a su pueblo, al pueblo, cumpliendo las órdenes del Fondo Monetario Internacional. Está matando el Fondo Monetario, Monetario Internacional a los pueblos indígenas del Ecuador y del mundo. Okay, let's bring in Danny Shaw. Danny Shaw, we know the loan amount altogether was $10.2 billion, in which $4.2 billion worth was from the IMF. But IMF's track record is not a good one. Does the IMF rescue package help Ecuador with its deficit and the economy? The IMF and the World Bank and USAID and these other quote-unquote development banks are in fact underdevelopment banks, uh, banks based on oppression and exploitation in the disempowering of the popular uh, forces of any country. Okay, on our social media section, the posts on Ecuador, obviously many, but because of what happens, it wasn't that great against the government, obviously, since there were so many that did die. Now, many of the posts were directed at the President Moreno himself, especially due to the heavy-handed tactic that was used by the security forces. But... Here's one entry that is eye-opening at the same time, not a surprise, but may go under the radar of many. Now, this particular person named Guy J, he said, Moreno, the turncoat betrayer of the Ecuadorian people, is the one who should be investigated for corruption. This is so typical of the CIA to enlist leaders of other countries through corrupting them. Now they are compromised and they will bend the knee to the U.S. diktats. Now, that's the sound familiar because our guests in the studios uh, did say that. Now, here's another online post which is quite dramatic in the message that it sends. Check it out. It says, the scenes from Ecuador and from Chile are a warning that democratically elected governments throughout the region facing domestic unrest are relying on the military to survive. If history is any guide, this does not end well. So there you have it. Just a couple of posts that shows the dramatic effect that this has had on the people of Ecuador. Time for a quick buzz. Coming up, we're going to talk about more
on the IMF loan and the controversy that surrounds it. It's really not over yet for the Ecuadorians. We're also going to take a look at the affiliation that Ecuador's president has with the U.S. How deep is this connection or relationship? Okay, we're back with our guest in the studio. Uh, let's uh, discuss a little bit more this relationship with the U.S. Uh, Roberto, you talked about... Uh, uh, what the, gains? The, the, no, the, the, the relationship that uh, the U.S. has with Moreno. Um, I, I'd like to ask you about what Rafael Correa has said, um, that um, when he was in power, mm -hmm. he uh, dismissed, for example, the FBI in that country mm -hmm. because he said that they were spying on the uh, internal institutions yeah. of uh, Ecuador. But it seems that Moreno has taken the opposite route. He has gotten cozy yeah. with the U.S. Yeah. and its establishment, for example. Is that true? Can you expand a little bit more about this relationship? Uh, was, as I told you, uh, because even I didn't understand and I couldn't believe that all, all of the sudden uh, Lenin Moreno is a traitor. Uh, the, I think the explanation of the Rafael Correa administration, as I told you, uh, uh, Ricardo Patiño, I think is the best explanation that uh, Lenny Moreno is a corrupt person who was, uh, uh, who is a victim of blackmail of the U.S. No? But uh, I, I, we have to understand something more important. Who gains with this relationship? Who gains when the IMF or U.S. policies order the uh, Ecuador economy? Who gains? Uh, and I think, yes, of course, gains U.S., but gains another members of uh, IMF. Uh, principally, the five uh, powers of they have both. It means China, uh, uh, United Kingdom, France, Russia, they have the, they have power in the in the in the board in the board of uh, council in, in IMF. Of course, United States has a uh, 18 or 19 percent of the votes. And behind of this, this is very important. Behind of these governor, governors in in the, in the board of the IMF are the corporations. The corporations are uh, trying to put these policies for what? For open the countries and then the, the investment, uh, the foreign investments gained all the economy of the countries. This okay. is the problem in Latin America. The harsh statements against the IMF were worse than how the people in Ecuador blasted the president. Now, this showed some degree of their intelligence, actually. One critical voice stated that what the government did is give a prize to the country's big banks and capitalists, and at the same time, it was a great punishment to the poor. Ecuador is rich in oil and other natural resources, but the dollarized country is deeply dependent on oil export income to fund its excessive expenditures. The tumble in oil prices has made it difficult for the government to do good with the spending, leading to the political drama. I have two orders of prison in Ecuador for the most disparate things. Nobody has done any harm at the international level, but it's to prevent me from returning and to prevent me from participating, especially in the elections, because they know that we're going to win. Let's see how things happen when they happen. 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 Yeah. Let's bring in journalist now and commentator Aline Piva. Aline, this idea that Moreno stabbed former President Correa in the back looms large with a lot of people. What are your thoughts about this relationship and then who Moreno is today? Since the beginning of Moreno's government, we know that Moreno was backed by Correa uh, when he was running, and that was an important um, element to, that led to his um, victory in the last presidential elections. But since day one, he has been um, overturning all the achievements that were conquered during the Korea years. Um, he's doing that as a way to stick to power. Um, he's now very, very aligned uh, with uh, international, especially the U.S. interests. And I think he is uh, very eager to continue doing so. Um, and we saw um, the commitment that he did with the uh, IMF, uh, 
I think that's a huge, huge sign that he is, um, you know, very hunger for power and he will do whatever it takes to continue in power and implementing this new liberal agenda that he is imposing to um, the Ecuadorian people. Yes, the IMF policies or conditions for the loans are very extreme. You just heard it there, resulting in devastating scenarios for many countries. Greece, obviously, one prime example. Now, it has been described as a system of modern-day colonialism that saps the poor to fatten the rich. It caters to wealthy countries and also Wall Street in the U.S., policies that promote corporate welfare, hurting ordinary workers. So there you have some more information about the IMF and its deadly policies and the impact that it has on the people. We have covered how Ecuadorians revolted against Washington-based IMF. Now, these protests have also been described as being against the U.S.-backed policies that Ecuadorians, well, they were revolting against the repressive U.S.-backed President Lenin Moreno's neoliberal policies, Moreno being a close ally of Washington. Ending the protest was the easy part. The real question for Moreno is what comes next. Moreno promised to continue Correa's policy, but turned to the West once he took office, at the cost of losing his popularity to 30% compared to 70% in 2017. The goals of the IMF loans are not so much the loans, but the strings that come with it, which can be worth a lot more than the loan itself. Danny Shaw, what are the U.S. gains from Ecuador? since the IMF is a Washington-backed institute. Yeah, the nature of globalization, which is really just a euphemism or fancy word for recolonization or neocolonialism or neoliberalism, is to uh, control all of these countries and their natural resources. Well, uh, let's look at some of those dictates and the way that the U.S. has exerted its influence on Ecuador. October 2018. Flashback, let's take a look here. U.S. military returns to exert influence in Ecuador and the region, according to the source, The Progressive, in which the president, Lenin Moreno, invited the FBI to assist with investigations. Now, this is while former president, Rafael Correa, he expelled U.S. officials from Ecuador, arguing that they were infiltrating Ecuador's national security institutions. So we can see there the way that the U.S. actually has exerted itself on to Ecuador. Okay, I would like to thank all of our guests. First, Danny Shaw, Professor of Latin American and Caribbean Studies, the City University of New York. I'd also like to thank Aline Piva, journalist and commentator. She joined us from Sao Paulo. And of course, our studio guests that we uh, had before. In our in-depth section, we take a look at the former president, Rafael Correa. He's had some harsh words for his former VP and current President Lenin Moreno. Now, he has said that Lenin Moreno's government has come to an end. He also said that he is a puppet of the lobbying groups. Does Correa's statements even matter? His economic performance does, especially when it comes to spending. During his tenure, for example, debt increased from $13 billion to $27 billion, but he invested $100 billion. Correa argued that as a country, Ecuador, we have become $86 billion richer. Those were his words. Beautiful highways, hydroelectric power stations, new police stations, schools, medical centers, and bridges, examples of where this money was spent. So you be the judge as to where the country stands right now. The protests in Ecuador may have died down, but it's not over for that country by far. Moreno may have cut Decree 883, which scrapped the fuel price hikes, but he's going to stick with other IMF cost-cutting measures. Those details will be coming out, which are not going to address the core and economic issues of that country. In debt we remain is how the IMF likes it. Let's see what Ecuador has to give up for this. Send us your comments on Ecuador or anything else that you would like. I'm Kovitavoy. Just goodbye until next week.